So on Friday, uh, I had my biggest tweet in a long time. I, I, I don't think I've ever had one go this viral. CJ, if you could scroll down and pull this up from July 17, asso- I, I wrote associating hashtag BLM with Marxism is the racists coming up with an excuse to attack something they already hated. Now, I didn't really think that much of this tweet. By the way, it's really poorly worded. Associating BLM with Marxism is an activity is a, the, a thing, the people. Like, really? Associating BLM with Marxism is the racists coming up with an excuse to attack someone, something they already hated. Like, I got I to, gotta like, explain, deconstruct this a little bit. But just, like, right off the bat, you don't read this and go, oh, yeah, that's a well-composed sentence. It's just like, I mean, it's a little poetic, maybe abstract. Maybe like people liked it, I guess. I don't know. Um, but a, a lot of people seem to have deliberately misread this. Now, this tweet got 268 retweets, 567 likes. But even more comments, 773. And a lot of the responses were, I'm just here for the ratio. Because at first, people were trolling me for this. And even comic Dave Smith, who I generally like and respect and you know enjoy his voice and his presence. I think he's a great contributor to the movement. He retweeted this with some kind of like paraphrasing, snarky thing, basically saying this is not thinking. It's like, yeah, I turned off my brain and then this tweet came out. Really? Come on, Dave. Like, and again, not refuting any of the points made here. It was really shocking how much logical fallacy was thrown at me in response to this tweet. And it was really fun like to have my alerts blowing up all weekend. But it was just, it was so much nonsense. And even from, from Dave Smith. And by the way, Dave, I'm happy to come on your show again if you want to interview me again about this. I'd love to have you on Adam versus the Man to get into this again. You're you're a you're a great speaker and presenter, and you're funny. It would be great to have you on for a conversation. Uh, you know, I, I invited him in my uh, by Twitter DM. Um, and if he doesn't respond, I'll I'll send out an email. I guess to look at whatever his proper point of contact is. But you know, he's talking about on Twitter, so I sent him a DM on Twitter. He's got my cell phone number. You know, I gave him that again. Um, but th- th- to the point of this, like there are people like a lot of the people who are freaking out, like really triggered by this, you know, try to point out when I called them out for being triggered, you know, show me where on this doll, my tweet hurt you. It was, it was one of those moments, like, but you're wrong. You're just like, I'm wrong about stuff all the time. Why did this trigger you? You know, you got to ask yourself, like, well, if I'm wrong and you agree with me on everything else, and I'm, I'm, I'm right about everything except this one thing, you would say, hey, hey, Adam, um, let me show you why you're wrong and respectfully and and, and just, hey, you might want to take that down. That's, you're, you're incorrect or issue a correction or, or whatever. But that's not what the response was. It was like a lot of curse words, a lot of bad homonyms. Apparently, a lot more people on Twitter than I thought know how small my penis is. That's shocking, right? Like, it's, people are, like, triggered. Like, this really threatened a lot of people. Now, as a background, there are a lot of libertarians, I should say people who pretend to be libertarians, who always attack the left or always attack the right. And you go, well, if you're more threatened by one of the, maybe you're just using libertarianism as a maybe you're not really a libertarian because if you're a libertarian, you go left and right, they're both wrong, they're both dangerous, uh, but more or less equally as uh, subjective, you know, differences in opinion there, but more or less, they're, they're both as wrong as the other, certainly wrong, right? They're both dangerous, and and people generally like you know, a true libertarian is, is intellectually offended by and inclined to be critical more or less equally of the left and the right. So when you see someone claiming to be a libertarian, but always attacking the left or always attacking the right, that's a clear sign that 
they're probably not a real libertarian. Like they're probably some kind of front. Uh, they're, they're using libertarianism as a way to pull libertarians away from the left or the right. And, and the thing is, as a libertarian, I want to work with the left when they're right on issues. I want to work with the right when they're right on issues because that's how we get more freedom. If we say, well, well, they're right, so we don't want to work with them. And with, with what I'm seeing is this deliberate attempt to separate libertarians from the Black Lives Matter movement or just, you know, and I'm not like, I'm not going to protests and organizing it. Like people are, you know, critical of me on Twitter as if this is like everything I'm about now. Like, no, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, do you want to call, some people have defined uh, the Black Lives Matter movement as opposed to the organization as, you know, anybody who believes that Black Lives Matter and that that's worth saying and doing something about. And in that case, like, I, yeah, yeah. 100%. I'm part of the Black Lives Matter movement, not the corrupt organization that is co-opting it and subverting that message. So there's this wedge tactic being used against libertarians, and this is really dangerous because it leads libertarians to be isolated. What You don't want us talking and working with people on the left and right because they have ideologies that we disagree with? I mean, just because you're a neckbeard living in your parents' basement who doesn't know how to talk to people doesn't mean that every libertarian should be just like you. So to, to the tweet itself, like associating BLM with Marxism, like, and, and, and there's a fair association, right? Uh, two of the founders of one of the groups that is organizing within the movement of Black Lives Matter have publicly identified as Marxists. Now, do you want to use that to paint the entire movement with a broad brush? Like, I, this would be like looking at the American founding and saying, well, you know, the American founders were slave owners, therefore some of them were. We know, we have the documents. Some of the American founders were slave owners, you know, therefore, uh, the whole American freedom movement was about owning slavery and the whole country, America, is, is, is we're all, you know, we all believe in slavery and racism. But no, it's just obviously not true. Dangerous, logical fallacy. And yet there are people out there whose main message right now, and certainly their main analysis that they're trying to promote about the Black Lives Matter movement is, it's all a bunch of Marxists. And there's really something that is cruel about this, because the majority of people who make up the Black Lives Matter movement just go, yeah, hey, we have a system that operates like Black Lives Don't Matter in a lot of ways. I care about that. I like to support people who are doing something for police reform and, and legal reform and ending the drug war and all these things that you know reduce the injustice of the world that reduce the violations of the non-aggression principle out there. And when you present to others who don't know better, oh, they're all just a bunch of Marxists, you are really committing a kind of fraud that is denying those people who are part of the Black Lives Matter movement who aren't Marxists, which as far as I can tell is the majority, you're denying them their individuality. You are saying that because you're a part of a group, I can dismiss your individualism and just project my assumptions about the group onto you. This would be like saying every American agrees with Donald Trump because they're part of his organization of America. Like, no, it's just, it's, it's just such a silly, dangerous, logical fallacy. So there, there is a fair association. Now, I, I there's there's another article uh, that I, I want to reference here from the Foundation for Economic Education. Is the Black Lives Matter is Black Lives Matter Marxist? No and yes. What the left and right are both getting wrong about Black Lives Matter, and you know th this is there's a lot of silencing and bullying in this article. Uh, he points out Brad Palumbo, the author, that when Terry Crews was on. CNN, 
Don Lemon, the host, is just like talking over him. It's this it kind of intellectual bullying in public. I feel so, like I, I kind of felt sorry for Terry Crews. Like Don Don Lemon just invited you on a show to like verbally bully you, you know. And that that's behind a lot of this, you know, polarization that people are using Black Lives Matter to promote. So the article says, in 2013, the national outcry over Trayvon Martin's death and George Zimmerman's acquittal sparked a national outcry over racial injustice. Amid this controversy, three activists, Patrice Cullors, Alicia Garza, and Opal Tometi, started a hashtag, Black Lives Matter, which soon went viral. They then founded the National Black Lives Matter organization. So the movement was there before the organization. This is a lot of things that people are, are trying to like refute my point on Twitter with. A lot of these, you know, I don't know, I don't know what to call them. A lot of the, these triggered conservative racists who have been responding to this post, you know, oh, the the, the organization is behind the and like they're trying to say it started before the movement. It's like, no, it didn't. Like that's just factually incorrect. I mean, you can. You can interpret this and go, well, they started at the same time. Okay, doesn't matter. Right now, the movement is far bigger than this organization. And to say, well, because two out of the three founders are Marxist, the whole thing, everybody who's a member, like it's just, the logical twisting that you have to engage in to refute this is, you know, just insane. Like it's discrediting. People should be embarrassed. You know, you look at the responses to that tweet. So, as uh, you know, conservative commentator Mark Levin said, quoted in the story, Black Lives Matter is an openly Marxist anti-American group. There's no denying it and is fully embraced by the Democratic Party and its media and cultural surrogates. Now, and, and there's some confusion here because they named the group after the movement. They just, it's just called Black Lives Matter. There is that primary or one of the main groups organizing with Black Lives Matter. We say group, I talk about the movement or the organization, not very precise language, Mr. Levin. As Republican Rep Matt Gates tweeted, Black Lives Matter is a Marxist movement. Black Lives Matter is not about police, it's not about race, it's not about justice. It's about making us hate America so they can replace America. Like, uh, no, this is just absolutely wrong. And, and you know what? The people who are doing this are revealing that they're, they're collectivists. They don't view people as individuals. They will dehumanize you as a member of a group. So, I mean, these kinds of, as the article says, these kinds of conservative criticisms of Black Lives Matter are widespread. And on one end, they're right. The official Black Lives Matter organization is Marxist, is anti-American in its values, and its views are rightfully alarming to anyone who believes in the Constitution, capitalism, and civil society as we know it. Well, those are kind of contradictory. The Constitution is anti-capitalism, right? Because it creates a authority, an authority that, that uh, authorizes taxation and intellectual property and central bank and then its original form, slavery, and isn't even legal because it was an illegal replacement of the Articles of Confederation, which technically are still the legal constitution for the United States of America today. The constitution we live under today is, is, uh, is, is uh, was a coup, was contradictory. So you know, is it uh, anti-American, you know, whatever, what, is it Marxist, the organization? Yes, totally. Um, but to, to, again, when, when you say that it's a Marxist movement, what you're doing is empowering these Marxists. And, and this is, you know, really dangerous. Because what you're, do <clears throat> by using logical fallacies by using lies to paint this entire movement as Marxist, what you're doing is empowering the Marxists. Essentially, you're repeating their lies and saying that, yeah, we've taken over this movement, we totally control it, and everybody in it thinks like us. Now, what a lot of these conservatives are doing is trying to raise a boogeyman, be afraid, be afraid of BLM, it's a Marxist movement. And when they do that, they, they're really doing this kind of pandering to their audience. Not only are they stoking negative emotions and, and, and using logical fallacies and giving people a distorted worldview, but they are, they are also having, I think, an unintentional counter effect that empowers 
the Marxists to be more relevant, to have more power. The article goes on, a whopping 51% of the public tells pollsters they support Black Lives Matter. Most of these people, I suspect, don't even know that there is an official Black Lives Matter organization, and I'm sure hardly any of them could name Patrice Cullors or Alicia Garza. Whether it's where I'm from in deep blue Massachusetts or where I live now in Washington, D.C., walking by a Black Lives Matter sign sticking out from someone's yard is just about an everyday occurrence. After the death of George Floyd, more of my acquaintances, friends, and relatives than I could count boasted Black Lives Matter. Many others changed their picture to a black square or otherwise signaled their support for the movement. I can personally guarantee you that the vast majority of these people, while liberal, do not support ending capitalism or dismantling the family. Conservatives are led astray as soon as they apply their valid criticism uh, of Black Lives Matter TM, the organization to the Black Lives Matter movement and its supporters broadly. The article goes on to cover, uh, you know, Mitt Romney actually going to one of their marches in, as, as an example, and you know some of their uh, their their feedback, their polite feedback for Senator Romney. And you know, I'm not a fan. Senator Romney is one of the worst. I mean, most offensive, you know, big government statists. But I will praise him for, on this side, standing on principle and being willing to work with people who he disagrees with on ideology because he agrees with them on addressing this one particular injustice. The Fee article concludes, when Don Lemon took issue with Terry Crews' take on Black Lives Matter, Crews was crystal clear saying, this is the thing. It's a great mantra. It's a true mantra. Black lives do matter. But when you're talking about an organization, you're talking about the leaders, you're talking about the people who are responsible for putting these things together. It's two different things. We need more of that kind of clarity in our discourse. Right now, the debate over Black Lives Matter is muddled and confused. Liberals and conservatives alike need to make an effort to listen and understand the other side's perspective, not the straw man caricature of it, used as a punching bag in partisan echo chambers. Until both sides take the time to understand each other, we will keep talking past each other and any real progress or harmony will remain a fantasy. Absolutely. And I'm actually really glad that a lot of people are exposing themselves in light of everything that's happening in this conversation around Black Lives Matter as people you shouldn't listen to. People who are motivated by, well, in this case, racism. Yeah, it's a real thing. Now, I'm a big fan of the Avenue Q song. Everyone's a little bit racist sometimes. Doesn't mean we go around committing hate crimes. Okay, I'll stop there. But uh, it's a great song that exposes the sort of silliness of, you know, ah, you're racist, you're racist, you're racist, right? And, and racism, by definition, is just believing that one race is superior to others. And in a sense, you could break that down and go, yeah, everybody's racist, right? And everybody has preferences for people. Um, uh, I like women who look like my wife. She's extremely sexy to me. You know, like she has certain features, characteristics. I, I like that. You know, we all, and, and sexual preferences kind of just prove my point that, yeah, in a sense, everybody's racist. But you, you don't have to break it down that way and, and, and have that inclusive definition of racism if you can have a precise definition. And, and this idea of, of racism as this nebulous thing, this big, just, ah, you don't like people of a different color, you know, or you have this tendency to do this or that. It's become, yeah, a really big, dangerous, obtuse word. And, I, like, again, I don't even like my tweet that went viral for, like, you're using this imprecise, because I don't go around calling people racist. Like, it's not part of my message. I don't, I don't really care. Like, what matters to me is racial hatred. Bigotry, you know, is, is more important. Having a negative assumption of an individual based on their race, that kind of collectivization, that's the dangerous side of racism. Not, you know, and I'm a, I'm a, I've said this before, like, I'm a fan of Carlos Mencia racist comedy because it's just, yeah, races are different. We can celebrate that. We can laugh at that. Not a big deal. So 
associate, associating BLM with Marxism? Why are people going out of their way to slander this whole movement as Marxist when it's clearly not? Probably racism. There's a lot of racism. And by the way, I know I triggered racists on Twitter because a decent chunk of the responses were something like, you freaking Jew. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, freaking kikes run everything. Mm, okay. So <laughs> to say that this is the racists coming up with an excuse to attack something they already hated. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, a that's, that's happening. And what really was the triggering of this tweet was you know, why, like, why? Because it, it points out a real phenomena that the people who are doing this are really sensitive about. It, it got them right in the feels. Yeah, they were triggered. And if you, so th there are, there is this phenomena of people in America who are racist. And a lot of them, maybe subconsciously, maybe they don't know it. Maybe they're not overt racists. Maybe in an intellectual sense, they can, you know, apply libertarian ethics and say, you know, I would, I would never, you know, use the state or force or coercion to discriminate against an individual based on race. But they do have preconceived notions that they want to apply to an entire group of people as a form of collectivization. It's very anti-libertarian, very anti-freedom to see people as members as a group, as opposed to being able to see them as, as individuals. And so when they see Black Lives Matter, they go, oh, I don't like that. Inherently, ah, Black people standing up for themselves. Ooh, confronting racism, ah, that makes me uncomfortable. I don't want to deal with that. And, and maybe this is people who, who really are just uncomfortable confronting racism. They're not significantly racist in any way themselves. But they're, they, when, like, when liberals spout their nonsense about white privilege, then you go, yeah, I don't, I don't want, uh, that makes me uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, okay, fair, you know. But by the way, there, there is a real thing as white privilege. A lot of people lie about it, misrepresent it, distort it. And, you know, try to, to make it more than it is. But yeah, white privilege is a thing. You want to define it some way and then, oh, a straw man. Well, it's not that. Okay, okay, fine. You, there is a thing. There is a real thing. I've gone to jail and been the only white dude on my cell block. <laughs> white privilege is a thing. So, you know, it, they already hate this. They're racist. Out, and then they go, oh, well, it's, it's Marxist. They just dismiss it as Marxist. Yeah. And just pointing that out with an imprecise tweet that doesn't even make logical sense really triggered a lot of people. So, you know, I had, I had, I had a lot of responses to this on Twitter. I've, I've had some fun with the, the Twitter mob over the weekend talking to these people, you know, being, uh, you know, being nice and compassionate and, you know, really uh, helping them see this bigger picture of why being triggered by this is, is such a bad idea. So I said it in one tweet, tonight I feel the saddest for those who don't understand that people of different worldviews and ideologies can stand together on issues of large social injustice. In fact, large scale social injustice will never be overcome until people can unite. Don't let them divide us. When I was organizing with Iraq veterans against the war, I was in the minority of libertarians in that organization and in the anti-war movement as a whole. And the main organizers of the big rallies in the anti-war movement were communists, open communists. It was the organization Answer, Act Now, Stop War, and Racism. They said, we're communists, and this is our organization where we include people of various political ideologies to work to Act Now, Stop War, and Racism. And I'm like, well, you know, end racism. You've heard my definition of racism. It's kind of a silly thing. You know, we're going to stamp out racism. Okay, whatever. But you, you want your coming together, defining it your way with noble intents. I'm not going to join, but I'm going to work with you to stop the war because they're organizing anti-war rallies. 
And back then we heard conservatives who were pro-war, who were afraid to come out as pro-war and say, well, you're wrong as a veteran who saw the horror of war firsthand, who understands not just from that experience, but reason and logic that the war in Iraq is a bad idea. Instead of coming out and saying that, we're just going to attack you for hanging out with leftists. Really? How come you're, are you anti-war? Why don't, why don't you not avoid the topic here and actually refute, refute the central argument instead of this logical fallacy of guilt by association, of attack the messenger, of discredit by guilt by association? Like, no, it's ridiculous. And I'm so glad that the movement didn't fall for it then. The libertarians were smart enough to go like, uh, no, this is war. People are dying. This is, this is uh, yeah, we're, we're anti-war. And just because Marxists are anti-war doesn't mean we're not going to be anti-war because we're not Marxists or communists, whatever. And if, if that divide and conquer had been effective for the anti-war movement, I mean, and they tried. This is a disingenuous, deceitful, fraudulent, anti-intellectual bullying tactic used by people who want to justify government policy is unjustifiable. Don't refute the central argument. Use all these other logical fallacies and try to keep people divided. It's it's really shameful. And if it if in the in the days of the anti-war movement it had worked, we might still have you know, we might have never had a even partial withdrawal from Iraq. It's it's it it really is a disgusting shameful phenomena of American politics that you see this uh, application of logical fallacies, guilt by association uh, to promote divisiveness and keep people from working together to fight large-scale injustice.